Okay, we have time for a, a few uh, questions and, and comments before before going on. Uh, that just blew my mind. Um, I would have never thought mono craters could have gone anywhere, but. <laughs> What, what seems to be emerging here as a, as a not common theme and maybe a common necessity is, is the need to analyze very small particles, need to separate them and to analyze them. And uh, it looks like we're, we're, we're sort of being <coughs> masochistic in, in trying to analyze single shards, whereas a, a Techno new technologies of separation where you could utilize the finer material might, might help improve things, might help improve the multiple analyses and the statistics. And one thing I would suggest uh, <clears throat> would be to collect the really fine stuff and at a horizon, say, and, and to combine it through fu fusion in a, in a platinum crucible or something like that, making, making individual larger uh, beads of this stuff and analyzing it. So that's one way of maximizing a, a sample, a limited sample, such as a car. And of course, if you have a bog, you know, in a pit, peat bog, you can collect more sample laterally and, and get more shards that way. But uh, I, I think one of the problems that we can look at in the future, and I wanted to mention and I got around to it, it is to look at the fine stuff, to learn to develop technology to separate it through elutriation. And not only that, but when we look at reference samples closer to source, to treat them the same way, to, to separate them out, elutriate them either through water and, or, or magnetic methods uh, Glenn Berger has developed these very sophisticated ways of standing the, the Franz magnetic separator on its side and putting a, a tube down and, and ha having magnetic separators actually of very fine material settling down and separating according to magnetic properties. So there are ways of dispersing and, and uh, concentrating these things. So something for your consideration. Any other questions or comments? <laughs> it's just a quick comment, but for uh, particularly small glass shards um, at where, wh where the science is particularly interesting, there are techniques available that can attack uh, trace elements on a very small scale, things like nanosims, which are uh, you know, available to some people. These techniques can be a bit tricky and a bit expensive, but uh, for particularly precious samples or, or very exciting science like what Jill is doing, these, uh, these techniques uh, are certainly available to people. When I'm hearing about these um, very small samples where you're finding a couple of shards or something, it just makes me think about some of the, um, where I work in the Great Basin, uh, if you pick up any old handful of dirt, there's going to be a bunch of glass shards in it of maybe mixed um, sources and mixed ages. And we, we know that, that dust blooms go from continent to continent now, and so it makes me wonder, are some of these shards being picked up the, off of a surface? one place being moved to another and, and and it just it's a concern i guess that that we have to be careful about you know how we're correlating these things and and what they're connected to interesting point anything else for now okay so uh mike is this going to be locked while we're gone or do we need to okay <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Okay. <laughs> How about our pockets? Is that okay? <laughs> okay. So we'll um, uh, fantastic session today so far, and we'll reconvene at uh, two o'clock and have a wonderful lunch.